And we welcome you back to Ventura College, and we move on to quarterfinal number four. One more spot in the semifinals. I'm tired. On the I'm table. tired. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Storm, Perry Webster here with you, finishing up uh, a long day, but uh, entertaining basketball so far. And uh, so far, the favorites holding court here. Yeah. Uh, and we. <laughs> Uh, move on to our fourth quarter final, and that's really an appropriate way to start this game because as much as anybody in this entire weekend in either bracket, City College of San Francisco is a massive favorite here. This is a real David and Goliath type matchup for Allen Hancock College who uh, really came out of nowhere in the South draw uh, and, and made it here. Uh, and now they face an incredibly formidable task. The good thing, you know, is that these championships aren't won on paper. They're won on the floor. And Allen Hancock believes in themselves. Coach I has done a tremendous job. You know, they knocked us out of the playoffs and uh, in an overtime game. And, you know, I just that whole time that we played that game, you could tell they really believed and they, and they really thought they could get it done. And he's big. He's athletic. They're going to offensive rebound. They're going to be very poised on the, on the offensive end. They're going to run some side ball screen motion. And, and they're going to take their time. Um, they're not going to get out of, out of character. And that boy right there can make some plays. And he starts out big time hitting the shot. Shane Carney. It'll be Glenn Jordan and Shane Carney, the backcourt, that'll really lead the way for Allen Hancock, especially with an injury to forward spirit Ricks earlier in the postseason. Yeah. They lose him and his 10 plus points a game. Yeah, I, I you know, he got hurt against us and you know, as much as we want to win games, you, you don't see you don't want anybody to get injured, so I felt bad for him though. Stansbury with the immediate answer. Stansbury, one of a number of big time shooters from beyond the arc for City College of San Francisco. Uh, like every year, they're loaded. They're back here where it seems they have a reservation uh, year after year in the championship round. Ties it at three. He shoots 42%. Terrific feed and the dunk for Trenton Mitchell off a great feed from Shamar Parker. Shamar you know, Parker, who only played in 17 games, uh, moves into the starting lineup. Yeah, Coach LeBon and I spoke earlier this week. Uh, just I was you know, doing some preparation for the weekend and, and getting ready to – to do this game, and they wanted to pressure them and, and do some things. Um, you know, I, I kind of told him I wouldn't do that. I would make them beat you in the half court, but that's how I coach, and he does it differently. And He's won some state championships, so he's a smarter guy than I am. <laughs> Terrell Co Brown gets the two back. We're tied at five. This is an important guy right here for uh, Hancock. It's number three, Devin Davis. He, he really hurt us. He can really drive the ball and score in the lane. Very athletic, very tough. That shot right there, he's very good at. A little over 11 points a game, and he hits the leaner there, fading away. It's a very difficult shot to defend, obviously. So Davis gives the Bulldogs a two-point lead. Stedman from the foul line, rims out. Rebound pulled down by Jordan. So Allen Hancock, a couple of minutes in, they have the 7-5 lead in the ball. Horn set out of Hancock, four-man will pop, five-man will roll. Five's going to roll right there. This is the guy you got to get a hand up. One and zero, one especially. Jordan hits, and the Bulldogs come out on fire. The game is one on the floor, Jeff. It's one on the floor, <laughs> not on paper. When will I learn? 10-5, quick start for the Bulldogs. That's exactly what they're going to need, Perry. First things first, right on the drive. Fans it out. Stansberry couldn't quite get the handle. Back outside, long three on the way is good. Well, City College really answering as Terrell Brown hits from outside. Both teams red hot from the floor, a timeout. 17-16 to go in the first half. We're just underway. Hancock leading CCSF 10-8 on SoCalCollegeSports.com. A torrid start for Allen Hancock, but they haven't lost the Rams to this point. It's still 10-8, a two-point It's point a long lead. game, yeah, Jeff. Two it's a long game. <laughs> two points. You know what's interesting is both teams are full-court pressing. I think, I'm think i thinking back on the day, only Cerritos and Santa Rosa were not full-court pressing. Davis into the front court, checked by Stansbury. Wants a high screen from Parker, goes the other way. Has that one stripped and stolen. Right recovers. For City College. Gets it ahead to Brown. Brown on the drive, coast to coast. No foul called. 
Rebound to the Bulldogs. They want to run the other way. Carney leaves it for Jordan. And a foul called. Is this going to be Ionescu, I believe? I like Ionescu's game. I remember him from last year in the state tournament. He's 6'6", multiple, posi multiple positional guy, handles the ball, scores it. A returning sophomore averaging 10.5 points per game. I feel like Coach Labaz got a, you know got a fence around all the best players in, in the Northern California. Seems to do a great job getting players every year, and they're always loaded and always talented. And two championships since 2011 for City College of San Francisco, and they got another shot here this year where they come in maybe on paper as the favorite, but another shot from Jordan from outside. The Bulldogs continue to be red hot from the three-point line. Brown will try to answer. Rims out. Rebound to Carney. Carney working against the trap. Back outside. Jordan works it to Davis. Open for three. Missed everything. That's not what he does best. Better in the mid-range. Do what you do best. Stansberry at the top of the key. Now whistle off the ball. Stay here. City can come at you so many different ways. You know, they got good guards, and then you go into the post. Michael Stedman, 6'10". 225 pounds. I know he's committed or signed. I'm not sure one of the two, but uh, I know he's committed to go to San Diego or S San Jose State next year. Let's talk a little bit about what's the challenge for a coach like uh, Justin Labaugh working with such a deep unit as opposed to maybe when you have a few less players and you don't have quite as deep a rotation. I wish I knew. <laughs> I think... Uh, you know, I, I think, like, you know, the full-court pressure and that stuff plays into having the depth, you know, to, to continue to rotate bodies in and out. Um, you know, I, I think that when you take over a program, that type of situation may be a little bit more more difficult. But I think Coach LeBaugh, where he's at in his career and the success that he's had, if you're a player at San Francisco City and you're not going to buy into what he's doing, well, there's something more wrong with you than there is with him because <laughs> – the success he's had, he, you can't doubt what, he, what his ideas are. I, those, those guys, and I, and, I, and I respect that, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate that those guys aren't afraid of the competition of a practice every day. They're not, you know, their sixth, seventh man is going to start every other school and average 25, whatever it is, but they're going there, and they're believing in a culture, and they're believing in championships. Shot clock violation as Davis tried to force one up. It's a two-point lead for Allen Hancock, 15-27 and counting. Remaining here in the first half. Hancock 2-2-1 press. They put Carney in the back of the 2-2-1 press, the uh, point guard. And they can get caught up in some mismatches and, and, and kind of get exploited on that. Stedman wants right down low. Drop step. Goes glass. No good. Mitchell high up for the rebound. Got to power up there. Got, got the ball deep. Got to power up and finish strong. Carney's got right in the mismatch. That's another returner step back from last three. year's team. That's good. Wow. Carney. Carney can go. First team All-State player. Tough as nails. 17.3 tough, tough, tough. a game. Off to a quick start here with a couple of threes. Allen Hancock with the five-point lead. You know, we actually did a good job on Carney when we played them. I know he got off in their last game against San Bernardino. And, you know, so, you know we talk about winning games on paper. San Bernardino won a lot of games on paper, but... Uh, you know, wasn't able to get here again, and, and Alan Hancock was able to beat him because the game's not one on paper, it's one on the floor. Harris on the offensive glass, able to keep it for City College of San Francisco. They'll zone out of bounds underneath. Let's see what San Fran goes after. Wholesale changes for the Rams. Lewis Hayes checking into the game. Borgia as well, Ben Borgia uh, checking in as well. Stansberry for three, rimming no. Rebound on the floor. And Allen Hancock's got it. John Riddick, who's checked into the game, has the rebound. Jordan. Right around the screen, picked up by Borgia on a switch. Loose ball recovered, wow. and a foul call. This will go against Stansberry. Kevin Baines has also checked into the game. So Carney and Jordan, along with Baines, Riddick, and... Mayoa Akinsanya. San Francisco only has two freshmen on the team. This is a, a heavy a sophomore loaded laden team. And obviously coming in here is everybody talking about one of the favorites, I think, along with San Diego City and, and probably Fresno. And you have to imagine they'd love a crack at San Diego City. Big steal from Brown, and he's fouled by Carney. And, and Carney there. 
gives up the foul rather than the probable Don't dunk. Don't call a flagrant foul. Savon's a good, a good ref. Savon's a good ref. I, I really got a lot of respect for Savon. I wish I could say his last name. He's Armenian. Uh, he does a great job. That, that's a good job stepping in and saying no flagrant foul. It's a playoff foul. Good job. So Terrell Brown fouled, but before the shot. So they'll bring it in baseline right. In for uh, San Francisco's Curtis Witt. This is another guy I remember. You know, last year we, we – uh, we won in the state semifinal against Feather River, and then I watched San Francisco City and San Diego City play live uh, right before or right after us. Brown and follows his own miss. That won't go. Turnaround nice half play. hook is good for Hayes, who cleans it up 16-13. Yeah, I mean, speaking of that game, uh, that was one of the very dramatic games of a very dramatic championship round yeah. uh, from Las Positas. But City College of San Francisco had a 15-point lead in the second yeah. half against San Diego. Well, yeah. for a furious comeback by the Knights. They struggle with San, uh, San Diego City's pressure late in that game, and um, I know Justin, and I, I know he felt like he should have won that game. Shamar can make shots. Knocks down the three, shoots 31% from long range. That was a no-doubter. The Bulldogs, five threes here in the early going. They have the six-point lead. Harris outside Hayes, starts a drive, spins back right, kicks it back to Borgia. Harris will step back among the leaders and assist. One or two freshmen. Witt fakes, starts a drive, kicks it out. Borgia open for three. Rims no good. good. And a foul on the rebound on Harris. Good box out by Jordan. This is a crowd that's favoring Allen Hancock. Uh, Ventura is a team from their league. Ventura actually won their league. Allen Hancock finished second. Uh, Allen Hancock was actually the 12 seed overall in the south. Got moved up because of conference affiliations to the 10 seed, went on the road, beat us. Fullerton went on the road and beat San Bernardino, the two seed. Uh, they are not scared. They that's are not a, scared. That's a double overtime win on the road at San Bernardino. 91-90 to punch their ticket. Carney forced to call a timeout. First taken by Allen Hancock. We'll step aside very quickly from Ventura. You're watching the 3C2A Basketball Championships on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Bulldogs will bring it in at three-quarter court. And Perry, 19-13. Allen Hancock with the six-point lead. And so far, I've seen a lot of uh, trapping and uh, full-court pressure from City College of San Francisco. Does that surprise you at all? No, I don't think it surprises me. I think that's kind of what they do. Um, but Coach LeBaugh looks like he just backed the defense up a little bit. He's going to say beat us in the half court. And Harris with the steal. He'll go in alone and slam it down. So Harris forces the turnover. 19-15, and now they'll pick up full court again. I don't mind picking up full court. I just think that the, the gambling could get them in trouble where they're doubling and, and reaching and stuff and giving up open shots. Well, so far the Bulldogs have made them pay from the three-point line, but can they continue to do that? Akinsanya inside wow. with the finish. Good, strong move. That's not a guy who gives them a tough uh, ton offensively typically. So, There's you, a guy scoring 3.2 points per game. You need those type of guys to step up. And a travel called on Witt. That's the second time that Witt's put the ball on the floor. He's one of the sharpshooters for this team, but I suspect the Bulldogs closing out a little bit, going to make him beat it by putting it on the floor. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking up in the stands, and I see James Giacomazzi, the ho head coach of Las Positas here. I know him and, him and Tyson and I are very good friends, the head coach of Hancock, and James plays in the league with uh, San Francisco City. I'm sure they had multiple conversations this week about San Francisco and their personnel and tendencies. And Diego Lewis has checked into the game and he turns it over in the backcourt. Trying to spin out of a double team coming and picks up the travel. Harris 
Off to Witt. Hayes trying to establish down low. I like this. I like Quick double team in the corner to Harris who passes on the three. I like Justin trying to go inside. Yeah. Harris with the finish at the rim. That is a tough assignment. That's a big for boy. Diego Lewis trying to match up with Lewis Hayes down low. Four point lead for the Bulldogs. Here they come back in the man to man. Carney with the crossover. Parker's already drained a three earlier here. Puts it on the floor, starts a drive, lost it on the way up. Not it's out of bounds and back to City College of San Francisco. Not what he does well. You know, you get into these playoff games and these moments with your season on the line, and really the biggest thing you're trying to do as a head coach is make sure your guys just stay within themselves and don't try to be something they're not. Ref comes in and overturns that. It's funny, you know, you, you think about last game, uh, Coach Spencer and Coach Maddock, they, you know, they like to get after the refs. These are two guys that are a little bit different. Coach LeBaugh is not very emotional. Coach I is not very emotional on the sideline. They, they try to, they, you know, I always wonder what, what I should do as a coach. Some <laughs> games I'm one way, other times I'm another way. I, I think the better tendency is to be this way. Technical foul. So the technical called here, they'll get together and sort this out. Is he yeah, it's an interesting question there. What's the, uh, what's the advantage of each one, of each style? It feels always feels to me like the guys with the more stature can get away with saying a little bit more. The, the more of a well, more well, legendary you are, the yeah. more you can get in their ear and get what you want. Yeah, I mean, I, Justin LeBaugh, I mean, he's about as good as they come at this level. I, yeah. You know, you think about throughout the state, you got to put him up there in the top three or four guys in the state, you know. Yeah. So, but he just, I think guys just have different styles and, and how they approach. Carney at the line hits the free throw. 22-17, and the Bulldogs will get it back. He must have said something to him on the baseline there. Well, uh, it's a one free throw technical. They didn't, yeah. they didn't give Carney two. No, that's the new rule. I, I don't even know the rules, but that's the new rule where it's only one one tech, uh, one free throw for that. Well, I was wondering if maybe it was on the bench or something like that. No, it, was on, it, was, it looked like it was on the guy, who, 55, who was guarding the inbounder. Okay, Michael, uh, Michael Wright, I believe. No, yeah. that's offensive. And they'll wave it off. Davis on the drive, the turnover on the offensive foul. That's Davis's first foul. And with 11.02 to go, the Rams have it back trailing by five. I don't want to overlook that 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 uh, Tyson I has his team in full believe mode. Believing Left-handed scoop won't go. Believing oh. the most important thing. Brown going coast to coast and ended up having a look point blank. Just missed the layup. Lucas over the timeline. I know a lot of people are going to make judgments on Shane Carney based on his size, but he's a heck of a player. He's an intelligent player. He's a great shooter. He's tough. Dexter Hood, who's checked in the game, picks up the foul. And I'm not, the, I'm not a guy who typically loves playing a, a real small point guard. Um, he, he's a good player, man. Well, it's such a loaded position here, especially in the 3C2A. And yeah. see a lot of guys like that. We just saw one earlier today, I think, in a losing effort in Elijah Duplichon. But it, not even to single him out because there's quite a few guys here. Yeah. And this is just another one. It's just a, a real player uh, for Carney, averaging over 17 a game. And he's going to need something special here. They work it around to Davis. Here's some lift action, some side ball screen motion with some lift. Parker kicks it out. Now Jordan wants to set something out. Down to four on the shot clock. they got to hurry. Jordan finds Davis on the baseline. Just beats the clock, or I thought he did, but it's no good. Either way, it's he heading back to the Rams. Off. I thought he got that off. Tyson thought he got it off also. Ty this is Tyson's first time in the Elite Eight, and I'll tell you what, man. He looks like he belongs. He's not, he's not over there acting a fool or, or acting over emotional. He, he looks like he belongs. And, I know his father was a longtime coach at Chabot. His brother's a coach at Copper Mountain. Coach is in the family. He believes. Stedman backing down. Turn around. Hook is good. I'm going to that. I'm going to the well, baby. I'm going inside. I, with Spirit Ricks out for Hancock, I think that San Francisco's got to try to exploit them in the paint. Would you expect to maybe see some zone before it's all said and done to try and yeah, pack it down? On, yeah, depending on foul trouble, you could possibly see some zone. But I think San Francisco City's a hard team to zone because the way that these guys on the wing shoot the ball. Yeah, they got a lot of shooters, Carney. too. Step back for Carney. Off the iron, no good. Stansberry has the rebound. Stansberry jets into the front court around. Carney lays it up and in. Timeout. Timeout, taking a full timeout. 
for Tyson I on the Allen Hancock bench. 9.25 to go in the first half, and the Bulldogs lead City College of San Francisco 22-21 on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Bulldogs in the road blue jerseys will work it. The length of the court here working from right to left in the first half against City College of San Francisco. Carney leaking out. He's ahead of the field and he'll lay it in. A lot, lot more flow to this game than the last game. Yeah, a lot uh, fewer whistles. Yeah, <laughs> a viewer's pleasure. Stansberry kicks it outside to Harris. Now gets it back, sets and fires. That's good. Stansberry. He's knocked down a couple of threes, and the Rams, thanks to 11 points from Stansberry, have tied it at 24. Davis against pressure from Stansberry. Angles over the timeline. Davis going to go to work, pulls up at the elbow. That's short, long rebound, tracked down by Brown. He went 100% on those against me. Right into the lane, kicks it out. Brown drives the lane, oh. goes down hard. He is hammered. Yeah, this is as we take a look at the replay here. And Brown, good fake, and then they're waiting for him. Mitchell and Riddick. Good hard playoff foul. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't think there's any question, but uh, you know, a clean play is very physical yeah. and uh, no easy baskets. Not not in this game. Brown to the line and hits the first free throw, and that's no small achievement after hitting the deck the way that he did. Yeah, Brown gets a tough, himself up. Brown's a tough kid. I believe he transferred in there from uh, San Jose or San Jose State. So talented guy. Eighty-three percent foul shooter, averaging just under sixteen a game to lead the Rams this season. Second free throw is up and good. City College of San Francisco with their first lead tonight, and it comes with 8.33 to go in the first half. You know, in order to get to 8.33 in the first in the half in the last game, it was about an hour. <laughs> Riddick in some trouble, and that one stolen. Brown in from the left, left-handed scoop, no good, but he's fouled by Davis. Got it, got it, got to finish there. Being a little cute on the on the take, got to finish. Yeah, Riddick gets trapped on the far sideline and. It didn't look like anybody really moved to him. Yeah, he's. they got to do all they can to avoid getting in that situation with him handling the ball against some pressure. So Brown right back to the line. Still a lot of people in the house and a lot of four-year coaches in the house. Uh, a lot of prospects on both teams. San Francisco always is a, is a pipeline uh, for players. Yeah, and, I was going to say, I suppose if you're a four-year coach, yeah. this is one of the teams you certainly wanted to see. <laughs> I know if I ever was a four-year coach, I know I'd call Justin and I'd be there on the first day. Uh, <laughs> I know, you know, there, there's a there's several programs throughout the state that I make sure I'd visit right away, and, and he's definitely at the top of that list. Brown with four straight from the line, and the Rams push the lead out to four. You know, I actually do – from, from afar, I try to do homework on, on different coaches at our level and, and uh, different programs, and, and I ask a lot of four-year coaches about what do they see when they go to different places. And I've heard, a, I've heard a lot of things about Justin's organization of his practice and how well they do things, and um, I've only really heard a lot of compliments about him as a coach and as a person. Davis steps back, and that one rims in, gets the roll, 28-26. That breaks the run by the Rams. Gets the Bulldogs back within two. 
Right in on Akinsanya. Stedman on the baseline. Back and down on Parker. Stedman. Good defense by Parker. They kick it across to right. He'll fire for three. That's tough. Well, what can you do? That kind of size, and he can step back yeah. behind the line and knock it down. That's tough. The San Fran beats you in a lot of ways. Akinsanya. Gosh. In alone with the two-hand stuff. Well, Akinsanya giving some nice minutes off the bench. Stansberry goes to the left hand, can't get it to go, tipped up and in. Stedman and Ionescu both there. This game is fast. They'll both, give it to Stedman. Both ways it's fast. Jordan gets it to Davis. Davis over the line. Ionescu tips it out, but it'll stay with Allen Hancock, 7-0-1 to go. I wonder if Coach I, when he gets into his halftime, you know, we'll see what happens. I wonder if he won't think about possibly trying to take a little air out of the ball in the second half and, and make San Francisco work a little bit on the defensive end and not, you know, they're able to attack and get baskets right now, Hancock, but that also could kind of be fool's gold a little bit later if they're attacking and not getting baskets and playing into City's hands. City's a little more deep, deep. I can sign you. Working on Brown, missed the shot, gets his own rebound, gathers, goes back up, blocked by Wright. Stansberry over to Wright. Wright starts to drive, fans it out, INSQ. Drives the baseline, kicks it out. Brown open for three, in and out. Rebound to Davis. It's a talented group. So much versatility. You yeah. see right there, block shot, and then he goes to the point forward position. Davis missed on the fadeaway, trying to keep it alive, and does, but out of play to Davis the Rams. Is a, Davis is a warrior, man. He plays hard, competes. Stansberry coming out of the game. Hayes checking in along with Curtis Witt. So the Rams get a little bit bigger. Wright and Hayes along with Brown, Ionescu, and Witt on the floor. Wright again. will fire again for three and hit it. And he's matched up with Parker, and it's going to be tough for Parker to defend him on the perimeter. And right there takes full advantage, knocks down the three, timeout on the floor. City College of San Francisco pushes it out to an eight-point margin. It's the 3C2A Basketball Championships on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Eight-point lead for the Rams. The winner here gets Cerritos in semifinal number two tomorrow night. Just uh, just check some scores from around the country, Division One, and I saw uh, UC Davis is up in the Big West tournament. That reminds me of uh, UC Davis's point guard TJ Shorts was in this state tournament two years ago. He was a Saddleback player last last two years, Big West Player of the Year. And I say that just to remind everybody the level of talent at this you yeah. know in in this thing and. There's a lot of players. I mean, he goes in, he, he leaves here, and he goes and is the Big West player of the year. He wasn't even the Orange Empire Conference MVP last year. Shorts was on the team that won. No, uh, Short, Sh Shorts was on the team that lost to uh, San Francisco City in the final uh, in 2016. Oh, that's right. Okay. He actually struggled in that game, to be honest. Shot from Carney, no good. Brown quickly back the other way, leaves it for Hayes. They work it back to right. Right. Oh. Bring it back out and reset. Shot clock at 15. Hayes working down low. Matched up with Jordan. 
That's another nightmare matchup for Jordan down there trying to defend Hayes. Picks up the foul before the shot. That's Coach, the sixth team foul. Coach LeBaugh had discussed with me how he wanted to be able to take advantage of when they got into switches. Uh, when Hancock got into mismatches with their two little guys guarding, you know, some of his bigger wings and bigger posts. And they're kind of just isolating them and going, throwing it at throwing it at him. I think that's a great idea and a great plan for them. Out of bounds underneath. Allen Hancock's going to zone out of bounds underneath. Let's see what uh, San Francisco's looking for. Witt will bring it in. Actually Finds Hayes. Hayes in a crowd off the glass. No good. Gets his own rebound. Back up. Missed it again. Witt right there, high off the glass, no good. Now Parker pulls it down. Well, three looks point blank. Witt's, the, look, Witt's looking at the ref. He's got to go up there and finish stronger. I like you, Witt. I, I think you're a good player, but we've got to go to the rim a little tougher there. Baines, and they get it to Carney. It's matched up with Brown, leading scorers for each team. Jordan with a hard drive. Parker lost Ooh. his footing. Ball out of bounds, it's going to stay with Allen Hancock and Parker getting to his feet, and he appears to be okay. It looked a little bit, a little bit of contact right there. Yeah, just never quite had his feet under him. So a couple of changes coming in for Allen Hancock. Riddick along with Mitchell returning for the Bulldogs. Sorry. That one tipped, and it'll stay with Allen Hancock. As we bring back the Mike Zepeda. Huh. Michael. Special guest. <laughs> hey, I think tomorrow, like, I want to do a Webster's World, like there's a Walton's World. Can we do a special <laughs> in the morning? I want to rock around Vincer up here. Working uh, against the shot clock does get the finish. What, what do you guys think? We can maybe get uh, some drone footage of you walk along the beach that or something like that. That would be great. I'll <laughs> take my shirt off and everything. Uh, well, <laughs> that, now we have to scrap the idea. Yeah, let's not do it. <laughs> INSQ, 4-3 short. Wow. And Riddick on the offensive boards, and he's fouled by Harris in the backcourt. That's the seventh team foul, or it should be. I thought it was. No, they're going to say that's the sixth on City College. So the Bulldogs have it back. 4.20 to go here in the first half, and they're trailing by six, but trying to pull, at least on paper, what would be a pretty sizable upset, number four seed in the South. Would you stop talking <laughs> about paper? <laughs> Travel. Jordan drives the lane, and he walked before the contact. So the Rams get it back. Hey, I got to tell you, you know, I had a pretty good call of it in 2014 when Santa Rosa upset San Bernardino Valley that year. And San Bernardino Valley was loaded, and nobody gave them time of day. I was just like, look, man, you're, everybody's sleeping on them. They can shoot the rock, and that's exactly what they did in a win in 2014. Coach McMillan's a great coach. Great coach. Brown, hard drive, wit, passes. Now he'll fire for three. Rimming no good. Hayes on the offensive glass, but a whistle. Yeah, this off. is going to go against Hayes. One and one. So a one and one. That should send Carney to the line. Well, Carney was on the deck. I don't know if that's the player that he pushed off against. I thought the push off was against Trent Mitchell. Well, it looks like Mitchell's starting to head to the line. You know, I'd never disagree with you, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Unless we're talking about Michael Jordan. <laughs> What, you agree with me about Michael Jordan? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> My, Mike gets a little angry when you disagree with him. I don't blame you, Jeff. <laughs> Perry, I, you, Perry, you want to talk. I've, I've learned <laughs> what Mr. works. I'm right 100% <laughs> of the time. Carney hits the front end of the one and one. Not at home. Remember. No, not, well, I mean, that's, that, that's true for, all, for most very <laughs> true. You got no chance in that one. No. Closer to 0%. Carney with one more free throw coming. In the air, too strong. Wrong even when I'm right. <laughs> Sway the world. Brown with the rebound. The Rams with the five-point lead in the ball. A little, Fres Hood. little Fresno City uh, action. You, made, you, you made have famous. to shoot that. Yep. Made famous by Vance Wahlberg. A little dribble drive motion. You see a lot of that at our level. Going to say it's off of Lewis Hayes. So back to Allen Hancock. Hanging around. 
Jordan triggers it in, but it's too high, and the yeah. turnover gives it back to City College of San Francisco. You know, Jeff, you're talking about trying to spring the upset, and obviously the Bulldogs came out firing on all cylinders, but your margin for error is so short against a team that's as good as CCSF, and you can't have turnovers like that. Now, it's not going to cost you in terms of transition, but you've got to limit the turnovers overall. Witt looking to bring it in. Out to Ionescu. Oh, Hayes, not a very good post entry. In the low post, spins baseline, lays it in. Lewis Hayes. Lewis Hayes is a bad dude. That, that that's a that's a perfect JUCO body for in the post. That's a bad man. 38-31. Carney against the pressure from Brown. Reminds you a little bit of Ethan Esposito. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Carney circles around the screen. Three is no good. On the baseline. Riddick gets on the offensive glass but stepped on the baseline. And he'll give it back to City College of San Francisco. Uh, you know, one of the things we talk about here, we enter the final three minutes. Well, this is such an important stretch. You get the feeling for Allen Hancock. Can't afford to go to sleep here and all of a sudden find yourself down double digits. Uh, heading into the locker room when you've had a pretty good first half. It's exactly what happened to Orange Coast at the end of the first half versus Fresno City. They were down five and six, and then all of a sudden a couple a couple of made shots and a couple of uh, really bad errors at the end of that first half really cost them, and that was a matter of fatigue. And right now, Carney looks a little fatigued out there. <laughs> Bless you. Witt Sorry about that. with 16 on the shot clock. Gets a screen from Brown. Got Hayes in the low post Travel. working on Riddick. And he walked. They try to run a little set, little uh, little horn set where they set a flare for Terrell Brown. Uh, Tyson and I was yelling, switch, switch, switch. He was prepared for it. They obviously went over that in the scouting report. Stansberry back in the game for City College of San Francisco. Defending Carney. Side ball screen. Watch the duck Gets in. the screen from Akinsanya. He's, he's, been out the key. he's been in there five yeah. seconds. There you go. Riddick trying to establish down low. The three-second violation gives it back to City College of San Francisco, 2.13 to go. You can, you can take a vacation down there, but you can't build a house. <laughs> Brown over the line. INSQ faces up. Hard drive, nice double pump. That was blocked by Riddick. I can send you with another rebound. Here come the Bulldogs, trailing by seven. Carney around the screen. He's got Hayes in a switch, but he gives it up to Baines. Good work. Jordan drives it on Haynes. Off to Akinsanya for the dunk. No, that's no, no foul, no T. The guy was underneath him. That was underneath him. Savon, I told you he's a good ref. Good. Yeah, I can tell you, I think it's, it's just hanging there. He's trying to. Yeah. Hayes is right under there, and he's just holding on he could have, until he, he can drop. He could have hung on to that rim the whole way. But and why take the chance and maybe get a tech that way? You come down yeah. and you put the onus on the other player for reacting. And a little bit of momentum shift here at the end of the first half in favor of the Bulldogs. What a stretch from Akintanya here in this first half. He's been a presence. Witt will fire for a three in and out. Ionescu with the putback. Eddie Ionescu getting on the offensive glass. Back to a seven-point lead. Isn't that a color? <laughs> or well, type of grass? Well, it really should be. No, I think that's fescue. There you go. I watch a lot of golf. Travel. That's a great job by Brown on the closeout. Yeah. Hancock's getting caught with their big men in the backcourt trying to handle the ball against the pressure. And Got to try. Those guys got to be, you know, if they got to help you and bail you out, they got to know I'm catching, I'm stopping, and I'm finding Shane Carney, or I'm finding Devin Davis, or I'm finding Devin Jordan, or Glenn Jordan, excuse me. Find, find your guards. That's, yeah, that, yeah. Stansberry. Cross to Witt. INSQ drives the lane, kicks it outside. Stansberry open for three. three. Good. Four-point opportunity here. The foul by Akinsanya. Getting chippy out there, boys. Yeah. This is where, you know, as a coach, he kind of stands very kind of stared the guy down a little bit right there. Yeah. And you got to be smart. You got to talk to your guys. Hey, we got, you know, San Fran, you know, thinking, we're thinking ahead. 
don't do something stupid and get yeah. kicked out of this game and not be able to play tomorrow night. Stansberry with 11. Not to say that this game's over. I'm just, I'm just and the lead out. is 11. Shades deja vu almost of game three earlier today. Carney dancing on the dribble. Watch for Jordan to pop back. Yep. Carney's got Stedman and a switch fires from 25 and hits. Oh my goodness. Carney's got 13. He looked pretty comfortable shooting it from about 30. On four three-pointers here in the first half. That cuts it to eight. Stansbury on the drive. Akinsanya with him. City College of San Francisco can play for the final shot here. Entertaining first half. The Rams with the eight-point lead. Stedman will try for three. That's short. Rebound pulled down by Akinsanya. Got three seconds. Carney at half court. Puts it up. Oh, just rimmed out. I'll tell you, you had the feeling that one might go down. I it, thought it, it was going, man. And that, it didn't miss by much. That was much. shades of Gordon Hayward versus Duke in the final a few years ago. Half time. And, and that missed almost exactly the same. Yeah. Halftime here from Ventura, San Francisco City College, a 44-36 lead. You're watching the 3C2A Basketball Championships here on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
And spread the word, everybody. If you have friends or family that couldn't make it to this weekend's games, let them know that they, that they can watch all of our broadcasts on our website at www.socalcollegesports.com as well as our YouTube channel, SoCal College Sports 1. And if you have a shout-out you'd like us to get on air, tweet that to us at so SoCal College SPO. That's S-P-O. And also just a reminder that the championship gear is available at cccaasports.com for a limited time only, so be sure to stop by there and get your gear today. At the half, the Rams lead the Bulldogs 44-36. to Back in a moment. Getting set for the second half. Quarterfinal number four, one spot in the semifinals. Still on the table. City College of San Francisco with the eight-point lead at the half. Jeff Stoinoff, Mike Spada, Perry Webster back with you from Ventura College. And uh, Perry, take a look at the halftime stats. And, uh, you know, for Alan Hancock, a lot of good news in there. But I think uh, turnover is really the key stat here in I, the first half. I think a couple things stand out to me. First off, uh, the turnovers obviously is big for Alan Hancock. They got 12 turnovers to San Francisco's three. Uh, the other thing is San Francisco's got eight offensive rebounds, which is a, a major factor that led to six second-chance points. I think that what's been able to keep Alan Hancock in the game, though, is San Francisco's allowed him to shoot 56% from the field and 54% from the three-point line. And if you're Hancock, you're going into that locker room and you're thinking, man, I shot 56% and I'm down eight. Yeah. You're not feeling real good about that. Um, it's tough to shoot that kind of percentage, but they're going to need to shoot that kind of percentage to stay in the game. If they can limit their turnovers, uh, and, and they'll be in that game late. And, and, and this plays out well for Hancock if this game is, is close late, being that San Francisco is, is the favorite and San Francisco is the team everybody's talking about um, from the north. And, and I, you know, Hancock is kind of playing with house money. Um, you know, nobody expects them to win except for those guys in that locker room and except those guys on that staff yeah. and, and the tons of fans that they bought. The Rams have not tasted defeat for quite a while. They're working on a 26-game win streak, and they started with a turnover here. I know Coach I's wife also believes that they're going to win. She is uh, sitting right in front of us, and she's very supportive of her husband. Trenton Mitchell goes for the dunk. He's fouled, so he'll head to the line for a couple of free throws. Mitchell shoots. 44% from the line. What'd you just say? Excuse me, it shoots 58% from the line. Not much better. <laughs> Ready's the first free throw, and it's up and rattles out. Now you talk about, you know, the margin of error here for Alan Hancock in this situation, and turnovers key, and obviously I think you could add making free throws yeah. into that mix. 
Uh, can't give away opportunities as a team. They were just two of three in the first half, so now two of five after a couple of misses from Mitchell. They don't need to play a perfect game, but they need to be darn near close. Stedman in from the right, shot off the glass, won't go, tries to follow his own miss, that's no good. Rebound on the floor, Davis battling right, and Davis wins the battle. Stedman's going in the Mountain West next year. He's got to be finishing those shots. Back to the Bulldogs. Working against the pressure, Davis fields the lob, and he's over the timeline. Works around a Parker screen. Guarded by Stansbury, off to Carney. Stansbury's a heck of a prospect. Um, I don't know who's recruiting him, but somebody better get smart and start recruiting him. I, I heard a rumor he's got good grades, too, and a, a squared away kid. And Jordan has that blocked by Ionescu, but the Bulldogs on the offensive glass. Parker in on Stedman, and he gets the foul. So Stedman fouls Parker back to the line. This time, Shamar Parker. You know, Stansbury, back to him, he's just got a great frame. He's got a basketball body. His body translates right away to the Division I level. He's got big, strong shoulders. He's got good arm length, good quickness, good skill, makes threes. Seems to be an intelligent player. Seems to be a winner. Parker hits the first free throw. He's got four in the game. Yeah, Stansbury, to your point, led the Rams in scoring in the first half as well with 13 points. Three threes in the mix. Parker readies the second free throw. That's good. Hancock has been uh, really lucky uh, to have Parker really show up for them over these last couple games with um, Spirit Ricks and, and his injury and not having him. Uh, they haven't really lost a beat. And, and, you know, they lose something, but Parker's a guy who kind of stretches the floor and does a lot of other little things. So Right forces one up, won't go, but Stedman with an offensive rebound for the Rams. Ionescu. Will hand to Brown. Stedman with the turnaround, missed everything. The but great Stansberry the has great, the rebound. The great Tom Deep, the, the best linebacker coach in the country for Fullerton College, just text messaged me. He is listening to this broadcast, and I want to give a shout-out to him because he is the best linebacker coach in the country. He's also the equipment manager at Fullerton College and was responsible for seven new pairs of Adidas that went into Coach Webster's uh, repertoire this past week. So thank you, Coach Deep. <laughs> Brown set to bring it in, baseline right, 22 on the shot clock. Leaves it for right, fouled on the shot. Is this going to be Parker or is it Mitchell? And it's Mitchell. Alan Hancock, um, one thing I'll be critical of is they don't do a great job defending out of bounds underneath. Um, they got to be better than that. And against this kind of size, could it ever be more critical? Yes. Working against the likes of Wright, Stedman, for the Rams and Wright hits the first free throw. He was big in the first 20 minutes, hitting a couple of threes. And he's got one more free throw coming. What is that hairstyle, Jeff? Do you did you ever have that hairstyle possibly in high school? <laughs> it's you know, once upon a time I had enough hair. So there, there, there is that. I don't think I ever could have brought it off. I think that that'd be a good look for you. <laughs> Ah, uh, those days are long gone. Davis on the drive. Offensive. And an offensive foul. So for Davis, that's oh, his third foul, I mop, believe. Mop and sweat, mop and sweat. Oh, gosh, that's two times tonight. That's two times I'm proud of these guys at Ventura College. That must be a linebacker. Look at him. He's got some good size to him. Brown at the controls. Off to Stansberry. Stansberry checked by Jordan off to right. Right faces up on Akinsanya. Right. Still dancing into the lane. Lost the oh. handle. Gets it back. <laughs> Turn around. Half hook is short. Ionescu crashing the boards and lost that one out of bounds. Back to the Bulldogs. Hancock uh, crowd didn't like that. No call. But hey, the ball never lies as Mike likes to tell us. That's it. The wisdom of Rasheed Wallace. <laughs> Looks like two Hancock guys just ran into each other at half court and both come up limping. I don't know if we had a camera on that, but 
Carney with the runner. It's no good, but Akinsanya gets the offensive rebound for Allen Hancock. Off to Carney. He'll try for three, rimming no. Offense. That's Baines on the rebound battling against Stansberry. See Cerritos players walking by. I wonder what those guys are thinking as they're getting ready for uh, tomorrow night's game. And I see the Cerritos coaching staff over here to the left watching, doing their scout. I wonder how many films they've seen on both teams. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they played uh, Allen Hancock earlier in the year. The San Francisco hasn't – I don't think they came down south this year. Um, Stands very too strong on the three off the back iron. Baines what, gets it ahead to Carney. One thing we did this year in our association is we opened up a huddle uh, video library. Um, so you, you actually can see every team play. Everybody's got, you know, their films up on, online. Um, and it's really, it's really been uh, kind of a blessing for all of us. Instead of having to drive a million times or, or call each other for film, you know, yeah. it's all up on the library. So I've seen San Francisco a few times uh, just on film, just seeing what they're made of. And it's good to take advantage of the technology yeah. out there, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's inter it does highlight an interesting point. If Cerritos were to play Allen Hancock, having met them early in the season, uh, how much of a difference might this be getting major, them now? Major difference. We're, uh, you are not, especially at this level, really at any level, but especially at this level, you are nowhere near a finished product uh, in the preseason. If, if you're a finished product in the preseason, you ain't getting to this point in the year. Harris with the tip in. Rams back up nine. Continue to show the full court pressure. Carney. Offense, offensive rebounding, got to stop that. Carney's over the line, gets it off to Jordan. Jordan hit a couple of shots early, but hasn't taken a lot of shots since. But that's kind of how he plays. He's not going to really shoot a ton of shots. He's just going to shoot a high percentage on the ones he takes. Baines missed everything, but the ball out of bounds off of the Rams. So the Bulldogs will keep it, but with 11 on the shot clock. They'll bring uh, it in baseline right. Jordan is a Tacoma kid. They play some ball up in Tacoma, Washington. I, I had a, a, a teammate that I play with it. Um, that's from that area is actually from Federal Way, but they, they got a lot of a uh, lot of good basketball players up there. A lot of NBA players that come from that area. Davis drives on Wit in a crowd shot up, no good. Tap back outside to Brown. Brown's tough here in the three open court. Three on two, right in from the right, off to Wit, wide open for three, no good. Rebound to Carney, boy, that's a good look for Wit, a very good shooter from outside. Yeah, he hasn't been able to get going. They're going to need him to get going this weekend if they're going to if they're going to you know really make a run. Davis into the lane, jump stop, puts the shot up, and it rims in. Davis gets the roll. That's where Davis hurts you, man. He could get in there, and he's very good elevating and very patient. Good jump stop, good solid play. Bulldogs continue to hang around. They trail it by seven. Parker's tired. They're going to go right out of him here in the post. He's got nothing left. Hayes to the reverse and lays sub, it in. Sub, sub, coach. <laughs> coach, I'm tired. I need water and, and oxygen. Does Coach I have someone to go to? Looks here. like he's got somebody at the scores table ready to come in. Shamar is tired. Yeah, it's Riddick is at the table waiting to come in. And we've got the stoppage of play. You know, Shamar, Shamar I think he's tired, but also when he, I mentioned a couple minutes ago, he kind of took a fall at half court. It looks like he's limping. There's, him and the other guy, they're both kind of holding their knee. They don't look right. Uh, number four over there, uh, Baines. Kevin Baines. Yeah, yep. the, both and Baines guys. took a shot subsequently that uh, that was an air ball, and you wonder if he wasn't. I noticed uh, feeling Baines, some lingering effects. I noticed Baines is Houston, Texas. So Allen Hancock contiguous district is Tacoma, Washington, all the way to Houston, Texas. What a reach! Long arm, <laughs> like Zapata likes to say. <laughs> Jordan guarded by Harris drives the lane. The runner is no good, but a foul called. And Jordan, with a good aggressive move, will get to the line for a couple of free throws. Of course I'm kidding with you guys. Um, <laughs> the way out-of-state recruitment goes is out-of-state players contact uh, the coaches that are in the state, and then and then they film, f f uh, fill out a form, and then we're allowed to recruit them. But We, we were telling ourselves that it was us, you know, getting this out to, to, yeah. a, wider, to a wider audience. It is you. It is you, <laughs> Jeff. It is you. 75% from the line. Jordan hits the first. I'm just happy we don't have Mike on the broadcast anymore, and we get me and you can get in a little bit of a rhythm. <laughs> Mike's omnipresent. He's always here, one way or another. <laughs> Two free throws for Jordan, 49-42. Bulldogs back within seven. Hood has checked in for the Rams. They get it around to Witt. Down low, Hayes working on Riddick. 
Back outside to Harris. Harris lost the handle. Akinsanya goes for the steal but picks up the foul. And that'll be his second foul. And the fourth on Allen Hancock as a team. Well, you, you know, Barry, it's 14.32 to go. Allen Hancock's within seven. You know, they get this under 10 minutes. Still in there, and now, now you're one run away. The, uh, the certified athletic trainers are cert, uh, looking at Shamar Parker over there on the, on the side, and make sure you call them certified athletic trainers. Witt for three, rimming no good, tapped back, but right to Riddick. Hayes tries to keep it alive. Here come the Bulldogs looking to cut into a seven-point deficit. Great, great certified athletic trainers here. Um, I'd like to toot the horn of Fullerton College has the best certified athletic trainers in the state, Lorena Tarnay and Juan Cuevas. In addition to the best linebacker coach in the state, Tom Deep. <laughs> Kept track of that one. <laughs> Hancock, Hancock assistant trying to rally the crowd and get them fired up. We're not out of this thing. I think that the Hancock assistants, he's got three young guys. I, I don't know them all by name. Um, but I would tell you that those guys, you could tell they bring great energy to that roster and, and, and to that team. I do know their name. Josh Matenko, Vic uh, Armendariz, and Gary West. Double pump from Hood, and he gets it up and in, 51-42. Maurice well, Furman as well. You know, what can that mean? You, you talk about, you know, your own staff at Fullerton College, and, and – what kind of uh, an impact can assistant coaches have, and where, where do they really, uh, you know, spell out what they bring to, to the, a program? Oh, I mean, you're only – as a head coach, you're only good as your assistant coaches. I, you know, I, I could talk about it at our, our level. I, I think that the, it's most evident at the Division One level of, of how um, good head coaches uh, continue to, to win because they have good assistant coaches that go out and evaluate players. They work with the players in the – Harris wow. with the transition three. There's so that, many guys who hurt you for San Francisco. That gives the Rams their largest lead of the night at 12. Timeout taken. 13-10 to go. You're watching the 3C2A Basketball Championship on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Fifty-four, forty-two. The Rams have their largest lead with 13-10 to go. The Bulldogs have the basketball. Going to need to go on a run. Davis quickly trapped, gets it back to Jordan. Jordan's over the line, a little contact, no call. Fans it out. Carney with a good look for three. Bang! I don't understand how you lose that player in transition. He's been fantastic from the perimeter. That's his fourth three tonight. He's got 16. I'm with you, Mike. That's a, that's. I was thinking the same thing. Hood. Carry. Hard drive. Terrific feed. Stedman forces one up and in. No foul. Uh, Boy, think, it looked I, like. I, I think a little give and take there. I think Riddick got a piece of that, but Stedman with the strength to finish. I saw, hey, he's listening to you, Perry. I think you're talking about going up there a little bit yeah. harder. That was, that was a little bit more of a Big West finish. I, uh, Mountain West. He's going, he's going to the Mountain West. So. Where, where's he going? Uh, San Jose State. I oh, saw okay. his future head coach here earlier, and I'm All sure right. he's more happy about that. All right, Sparties. Carney. Sparties had drive. The finger roll, no good, but a foul call. Sparties went 0-16 uh, in, in the uh, Mountain West this year, so 
He's going to need to finish strong, and they need to win some games. So. Yeah. It's hard. That was Coach Prelo's first year there. It's tough to tough to come in and take a program over, and they lost it. They lost one of their best players. And now we talk about the value of assistant coaches. Yeah. Well, where are my assistant coaches? Who are they bringing in for next year? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. At the end of the day, all of us can be John Wooden, right? We all can think we're the greatest coach in the world. Players win games. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about players and, and getting them getting them right. Yeah, it's really all about setting up the players for success. You do that to the best of your abilities, you're going to consistently be successful. And that's why you see the greats where they are and the le legacies that they've, they've established. Yeah. John oh. Wooden coached a guy named uh, Lou Alcindor and a guy named Bill Wall. Those guys are all right. Yeah, that, that probably helps. And, and amongst many others. Those are probably the best, too. Yes. Collegiately, anyway. Well, maybe the two best, best player, collegiate players of all time. What a finish yeah. for Hayes. Maybe one and two. Yeah. My father would say so. My dad likes to tell me stories about those two guys. <laughs> well, I don't know. Has there ever statistically been a more dominating college player than Lou Alcindor? Well, uh, the, the only guy that would be three years is probably Bill Walton. Yeah. In, in terms of not just the numbers, but the success. Yeah. Was, and say, I, I'm not sure. Did Alcindor lose a game in his college career? I don't know. Mitchell Oof, stands ducks right under and yeah. foul going to be called and make sure everybody's all right. Stansberry got high up on that one and Mitchell ducked under and down went Stansberry, but he's up and appears to be okay. As you look forward as the weekend goes on, again, not to say this game is over, but as the weekend goes on, it's a battle of attrition, man. These guys got to get home. They got to get rested. They got to get a good dinner. They got to get a nice bath. They got to wake up in the morning. They got to stretch. They got to take care of their bodies because you cannot win if you're not feeling healthy on that last day. Three games in three days, and, you know, even for these young guys, it's a grind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Parker. Because they're not just any game Hayes. either. You know, it's, it's not just Hayes any game. sends it back but gets the foul called a little bit with the body, and Parker heads to the line for a couple of free throws. Shamar Parker needs to be playing left tackle. Look at that man. He needs to be playing left tackle. He's a big old hoss. Good feet, good skill. Like I said earlier, he, what an important guy that they've had has been able to make plays here for the last for them the last couple of weeks. I'll tell you what, a pretty good touch from the line. Oh yeah, he's got a good touch from three too. You know that yep. big body, but he he's got some game. San Francisco City College in the penalty, so it'll be free throws the rest of the way. I see uh, for the I Bulldogs. See, I see Steve Ball walking down the stairs over there. He's the president of our coaches association. I just want to shout out what a great job Steve does. What a great guy he is. He takes a lot of heat from everybody and. And, uh, and and does just does a great job. He, he, he really handles people well. I, I couldn't be happier to have a guy like him kind of leading us on the association. Stedman, double team comes. That pass nearly intercepted, but Brown recovers. Hayes working against Jordan. Lost it on the way up. Jordan saves it, but back to Brown. Down to nine on the shot That's clock. Deep. Stansberry with a deep three. It's short. Jordan with a good move. It's a two on one. Off to Carney in from the left, and he's fouled. Looks like Hayes getting back, who picks up the foul. No, it's Stansberry, and that's the third on Stansberry. Have I told you guys about the popcorn here? Oh, I've tried it. Okay. <laughs> I, I've tried some of yours. You know that, though. I, you oh, know. yeah. <laughs> You're right. I asked for permission. You did. The good thing you did, I might have <laughs> bit your hand off. <laughs> Got to know my limitations here. Carney <laughs> with his first free throw. It's up and good. He's got one more coming. He's up to 18 in the game. Now 19 as he hits the second free throw. Still an eight-point game, 10.54 to go. How about a shout-out to the LaBaugh family tree. Jason LaBaugh just recently subscribed to the YouTube channel. Likely watching his brother. Welcome. Here Where, up where's at the Jason State at? Eight. Do you know where Jason is? I have no idea. He's probably... It up in the north. I played, Brown with I, a, I played with Jason Lamar at UC Riverside back oh, in the did day. You? Did you? So he was a good, pretty good player? He had some game. Had some game. Brown with a hard drive, and he's fouled, so he's going to head to the line. Who, well, it was a uh, – I'm sorry, go ahead, Perry. I was going to say, does he coach, or I don't know anything about him? Not entirely sure what he was doing. I, I, I know Coach Justin Labaw has said, uh, oh, hey, you played with my brother. You played with that knucklehead? And that's about the extent <laughs> of the conversation that that went in. Then we had to talk about the matchups. Ten points in the game now for Brown. He's got one more free throw coming. 
it's an interesting shift in this game. I think it was a very uh, uh, up and down type of game. Not a lot of whistles in the first half, uh, but it's really moved much more toward the physical side here in the second half and a, a lot more challenging at the rim for both teams. I think one thing, a major reason that that happens in a game, a lot of times you're going to see at this level is that um, – first half of games are a little fast, right? And in the second half, you're offensively, you get in front of your own bench. And now all of a sudden, us coaches, we all got a little bit more control of the situation and the tempo. Davis with the turnaround from 15. He wants a foul call. He's not going to get it, but he'll settle for the two. 60 to 52. That is a lost start in the game of basketball, the mid-range jumper. Davis really does a good job with that. Terrific feed to Stedman. Clean block from Riddick, and Akinson has got the rebound. How about Riddick with the defense? Here come the Bulldogs, still trailing by eight. Carney with the long three. Long rebound recovered by Davis. Davis working on Hayes, finds Carney, thought about another three. You know, Back would, to Davis. I would love some braised short ribs right now instead of this popcorn. Akinsanya into, the into their lane, I should say. Tries to feed Riddick, but the steal by Stansberry. Hayes on a two-on-one, off to Hood, the double pump, no good. He's oh. got his own rebound, Riddick, another big block. Davis off to Jordan, reverse layup, no good. Rebound on the floor, Stansberry's got it. Back and forth, Stansberry into the front court. Brown, long three, that's good. Uh. Uh. Five-point turnaround, it looked like a two-on-one for Allen Hancock, but the Rams come away with it, and Brown delivers a big 3-9-15 to go. 63-52 Rams on SoCalCollegeSports.com. a big series there. And the Bulldogs on a couple of huge blocks from Riddick look like they might have a chance. Yeah. Transition opportunity, but the Rams with some good defense of their own, and then Brown drains a three. That momentum, Rams, that pendulum was about to switch with those two blocks and then a, a fast break, but they missed the layup, and then Brown hit a big three. What a stutter step from Carney. Hey, Carney, might be a little bit of IT. That was tough. 21 in the game. Back to a nine-point lead for the Rams. Right on the baseline as the Bulldog faithful try to make some noise. Coach I's wife leading the cheers. I wish I knew her first name. I'm sorry, Mrs. I. <laughs> Hayes. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Sends another one back. Climbing the ladder. Carney leaves it for Jordan. Steps in for three. Missed everything. Akinsanya keeps it alive, but right to Brown. Brown. In transition, hard drive to the glass, lays it in. Riddick was looking for number four in the last three minutes. Brown is tough, man. He's very good in the open floor. I'll tell you, the one thing really keeping the Bulldogs from making a run here is Terrell Brown. Yeah. Five in a row. That and the other, all the other great players on their team. I mean, San Francisco is yeah. loaded. But you're right, Brown's big, big late. Davis misses from 17. Stansberry with the rebound. Ahead to Brown. Brown in on Jordan. Backing down. Back outside. Back right up. giving chase. And he saves it. Oh, wow. What a play by Wright. Hayes kicks it outside to Ionescu. Tough right here. Gets Tough it back. Matchup. Backing yeah. down on Riddick. Oop. Over the outstretched oh. hand. Ionescu's follow is in and out. 
<laughs> Davis has the rebound. Ionescu, sneaky athlete. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. 7.30 to go. Carney. In on Ionescu, lost the handle. Got Sanford's back, got the Carney. steal. Two on one. Stansberry goes glass, lays it in. So tough. Stansberry was 17 in the game. Where's Stansberry going? That kid's a stud. Rams with a 13-point lead. I think he wanted to get another year and go to Fullerton College next year. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's just what I heard through the grapevine. <laughs> just planting the seed. <laughs> Davis. Hayes on him on a switch. Leans in. Stansberry with the block, but picks up the foul. So Davis going to head to the line. San Francisco's in my contiguous district. Mm, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. Well, you can't you can't bring a coach to to an event like this. Of course, he's going to see some things he wants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being good. <laughs> Davis misses the first free throw. We haven't seen 24 for San Francisco in a long time. Ben Borgia, he comes back in the game, and Curtis Witt comes back in the game. So. Coach Labaz showing a lot of confidence in his bench. Up 13, seven minutes to go. Got to block out here. Free throw is up and good for Davis. Shamar Jordan back in the game with Kevin Baines. They knocked knees earlier. Looks like they're fine now. I screwed up that name with Shamar Parker. I, I apologize. You're right, game number four on the day for yeah, you. Yeah, his family probably hates me. I'm sorry. Right, guys. driving on Parker over to Witt. Now it's Borgia on Mitchell. Ionescu from the elbow, off the back iron. Mitchell rips down the rebound. Kearney quickly back into the front court. Baines drives nice the lane, stop. leaves it for Mitchell. You could tell Alan Hancock's doing jump stop drills, yeah. man. They're really well trained in that, in that deal. Parker, checked by Ionescu. Shot clock down to 11. Kearney out front. Seven on the shot clock. Round to Mitchell screen, right on him. Drives the lane, the teardrop oh. is good. Kearney. First team all state for a reason there, fellas. 23 points and it is a little shades of IT. Yes, he's the righty version. I, it's gonna be interesting to see what level Kearney ends up at. I. I I, I won't be surprised if he kind of sneaks in low Division One or gets a really good Division Two scholarship. He's a talented guy. Yeah. It's a 10-point game. Great. Substitutions for the Rams. You know, Perry, you and I and, and Jeff, you know, we always talk about feel for the game. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, not a lot of players have it, and some players have it better than most. And, yep. Uh, Carney's one of those players where, you know, it, when he becomes an even more knockdown shooter, I mean, there's, it's really hard to guard a guy where you have to be up in his grill. And with his quickness, you know, you not trying to make the comparison to Steph Curry, but you look at a guy like Steph Curry and his shooting ability, I mean, it helps that he's the best shooter ever. But whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> he, no, no, no. That, he's, that, he's just going to try and slide that one right in there. But, <laughs> it, it, but, it, but it, it speaks to a player because now you have to come out and guard him and – the. You know, play, having played as a guard, when you get, oh, my goodness. That Step goes back, in. three, no good. Baines on the offensive glass. He's hammered. He'll head to the line. Getting back to the point, though, as a point guard, you're looking for your defender to, to, to put himself in a position where you can get his hips past or you can get your hips past his. Yeah. When you can do that, you can put the defender constantly in jail and put him in a position where he's at your mercy. You know, when you have the ability to shoot the basketball, it gets that yeah. much easier for you, regardless of how big you are. That's what make, makes a player like Isaiah Thomas for the Lakers so good. Yeah, and Steph Curry, like you were talking about, he's not the quickest guy in the world, but his shot makes him so much quicker. Bain's second free throw around and out. Now the Bulldogs, who trail it by 12, have left a couple of chances at the free throw line here in the second half. Right in on Mitchell. Wants Stedman down low, faces up on Parker. Good skill. Across to Ionescu, he'll try for three, no good. Got to get a good possession here. Co Coach has got to get something good here. Jordan. Need a basket, flow. They're going side ball screen motion. This causes flow. Off to Carney, checked by Brown. Back oh. to this matchup. Brown goes down, Carney puts it up from 15, no good. Mitchell in a crowd, that wow. shot blocked. Now a whistle comes in. 
Carney's not happy. He got, he got pretty leveled on that shot going up with it. And he's saying, well, now you call it after I just got pummeled. Yeah. I don't know. I think he's begging a little bit. I think that was the right call by the official. Yeah, I think so. So Brown will head to the line with both teams in the penalty. I think that the official just did a good job of listening to Carney. Carney's a captain. He should have that ability to, hey, it's five minutes left in my sophomore season. I got a little Agreed. bit of emotion going. I got to be able to communicate with you a little bit. Yeah. What do you like to tell your players about talking to the official? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's pretty, pretty much what I thought. Is yeah. That, is that a, uh, so it asked the question. Is that a direct quote taken <laughs> from Coach Andy there Brown? Uh, no, there might have been a couple curse words in there if it came from Andy. A <laughs> <laughs> little, little more color. Yeah. 71-57, no, Rams lead it by 14. You know, you, 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 try to, you try to let your guys who handle officials better than others, have, you know, some guys just don't handle them very well, and you got to really, you know, nip it in the bud right away. Hey, you know, you know, be quiet, shut up, take them out of the game, sub them out, whatever you got to do. Yeah. Um, I try to tell them, let me handle the officials, I'll ride them. You know, but you go into a game, and this is, uh, this is honesty, uh, you know, you go into a game, and I'll tell my guys before a game, hey, that official right there, he ain't listening to you. He's going to tee you up. You don't say a word to him. There's some guys you know you can say a little bit more to. I don't. These two, these two refs over here are northern guys. Savon, I believe Savon's one of the best officials in the state, and I think a lot of other people do, and that's why he's here. Savon's a guy you can kind of get after a little bit, uh, and, and he's going to take it, and he's going to give you the respect to, to take it. And, and all of us know that refs are going to make mistakes. They're not perfect. We're not perfect as coaches. When they when they allow you to, to say stuff, you, you appreciate that. Not good. Carney yeah, got hurt. Carney just came down on somebody's foot. And we have to have an official substitution, I think. Or are we going to have a timeout? A timeout called by Alan Hancock. They need him back quick. 4.41 to go. We'll step aside very quickly from Venturi. You're watching the 3C2A Basketball Championship on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Bulldogs with the ball trailing by 14, 438 to go. Mitchell backing down, goes to the reverse, blocked by Wright, recovered by Harris. Just almost getting to that time where we could start talking San Fran and Cerritos. Man, you read my mind. Uh, you know, if it, if it stays like this, as Hood in a crowd tries to leave it for Stedman, but uh, it's an intriguing matchup on paper, and, uh, uh, you know, of course, as we know, the games aren't played there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's quickly make that point. But uh, and nonetheless, it, that, uh, that appears to be yeah, it was quick thinking on my part there. Uh, um, but, you know, a very good matchup. And Cerritos with a lot of length and athleticism, yep. a team that uh, uh, very much can hang with them. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if uh, Carter is able to play tomorrow. I, I still think Cerritos, though, you're right, they do have the length and athleticism. I think, I think Cerritos' defensive style uh, uh, could affect uh, San Francisco a little bit. And I think – you got to not turn the ball over against San Francisco. It's I, a, yeah, you're, you're you're exactly right. You can't turn it over against them, but at the same time, not having 
not, not having Jason Carter is going to be huge. It, he's exactly the type of body that you need to compete against a team like City College in San Francisco, able yeah. to impose their will down low. They got bigs with size, athleticism, and skill, and Carter really negates a lot of that down low when he's in the ball game. and if he can't go, uh, you know, somebody's got to step up, and that player likely going to have to be Jonathan Guzman, yeah. and he's been fantastic yep. this season for Cerritos. And, guys, did you watch Hayes, one of the things that's so important about Carter is not his skill set simply, but the depth that he provides because yeah. it is Guzman. It is Thomas who's probably going to have to defend more uh, down low in a matchup tomorrow as that one crawls in. The lead now 17. And you don't have those extra fouls to give. Uh, it puts more pressure on those guys to stay out of foul trouble, dealing with some big bodies with very good skill sets for the Rams. You know, I, I, Hayes is, a, is, is an issue on the post uh, for San Francisco, but... Um, Akin Sanya throws nice it play. down. Stedman... Stedman hasn't shown a, a ton on, on the back of the basket, so I think the more important thing against San Francisco is your depth on the wing. These guys are talented on the wing. you got to be ready to guard them and, and then handle the ball. But, hey, I, you know, just watching San Francisco my first time live, uh, very impressed, obviously, with their, their talent. Their talent level is, is high. They're as talented as anybody in the state. I would say right there with San Diego City, those two are the most talented teams in the state. Um, but I will say it seems like you can score on San Francisco City. I think they're gettable in terms of yeah. when you want a bucket, I think if you have the personnel, you can go and get one. Uh, we know that Cerritos does have the personnel in terms of Demetrius Thomas. Uh, we saw Ke Keyshawn Mack was very effective today. And, you know, obviously with Carter being out, they have to step it up. And yep. Got to be able to beat guys off the dribble one-on-one. 17-point -on -one. game here, three minutes left. Carney. Carney, good to see that he's back out there after uh, apparently uh, a fall uh, earlier in the second half, but he is out there, missed fires from long range didn't there. Didn't shoot that one in unison with his legs, and that's likely because he's hampered by the injury. It's off the mark. The wind has come out of the sails here. Oh, God, Carney, Carney still wants to play. Steps in with the steal, right getting back, able to bother oh, that oh, shot, and Stansberry hustles back to get the rebound. That's a great job by the Rams there after Carney had a little bit of a lead. Both Wright and Stansbury really hustle back. Brown drives the lane in on Akinsanya. Contact there and a foul called. I, I want to take a second and uh, recognize Tyson I for a great season. He did a, he did a tremendous job this year. Uh, we saw them in the showcase early in the year. Um, and where they're at now and, and where they were at then, he's done a, a tremendous job. And it's not going to end the way he wanted it to. Yeah. Um, but just getting here uh, is an impressive feat. He's doing a good job with that program. He came on the road and he beat us. And, you know, we were a team that was in the state tournament last year. And then he went on the road and beat San Bernardino, who was, you know, kind of one of the teams everybody was talking about as a favorite in the state. Yeah. And, and, and they did that both of those games without one of their key players, an all-conference guy in Spirit Rick. So you got to give credit where credit's due. Tyson and I had a tremendous year as a head coach, and so does his team. Carney with the long three, no good, but... Akinsanya with the rebound. Oh. Davis had a shot point blank but couldn't get it to go. Rams want to run back the other way. Harris off to Hayes who will finish 80-50. to 50. Now, well, this was going to end up being a little bit wider score than this game would indicate. I think yeah. the Bulldogs were very game, and they hung around in this one really throughout. Uh, but it is going to end it looks like here in the quarterfinals i'm you, hungry yeah you've talked about the the officials let's give them credit where yeah. credit is due michael hendricks savan aziza azizian and richard patterson and uh how about some more recognition uh, the the entire staff here at ventura college hosting this event uh spearheaded by the athletic director of the year will cowan even those floor sweepers everybody everybody gets a pat on the back and of course george matagakis and Mike Robles at the 3C2A, Carlisle Carter, and our crew, of course, Matt Henson, Emery Johnson, Jorge, Roo, Jorge, Jorge Zepeda. Zepeda. <laughs> if that name sounds familiar. And That's the star of the show. Uh, no, well, the star of the show, Perry Webster. <laughs> no, no, no. Coming on and uh, providing us with a little bit more insight than we would normally have and adding a lot of credibility to our broadcast. Just a terrific job today. I would say, you know, not about me. I, I think you guys do a great job. I'm very happy to be a part of it. I'm happy that the 3C2A has found you guys, and I know how good you guys are and how good you've been for a long time and how good you are for our whole association. So well, I appreciate you guys. Well, we're happy to hear you say that because you're not going anywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> now that you're here. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm going to start charging you guys, though. I decided that uh, today was the only day I'm going to do for free. For free. But, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, can I pay you with water and Gatorade? It's going to be 1500 a night. Uh, actually, 1500 every 30 minutes the rest of the weekend. <laughs> that, sounds like, that's not, that sounds like NBC numbers. I need, We're not hey, quite there yet. It, looks yeah. like, it sounds like I need some money to get some players for next year's uh, state tournament <laughs> run. So, <laughs> well, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Davis we're, with the turnaround. We're going to get a phone call from some compliance yeah. officers, and our phones are going to yeah. get tapped by the feds. Watch out. The funny thing is people actually would, would take me seriously. No, that doesn't happen. Rams finishing it out here, down to 110 to go in the game, leading it by 19. Witt pulls up from 12 feet, gets the shooter's roll. 82-61, under a minute to go. And it's going to be the Rams and the Falcons tomorrow night in semifinal number two. So let's quickly, as Jordan hits the teardrop, uh, set the stage for you tomorrow on the men's side at 5 o'clock. It'll be San Diego City College taking on Fresno City College as Borgia finishes. And then in game number four tomorrow at 7 o'clock, the other semifinal, City College of San Francisco taking on Cerritos. Uh, you know, the top seeds holding on here in the four quarter final. So the drama will build going into tomorrow night. That one in and out from Jordan. Both yeah. teams still working, and this one going to go back to the Rams. Let's set the entire schedule for tomorrow at 1 o'clock. It'll be Merced who upset the top seed from the South, Palomar. And it, it'll be Merced and Fresno City, both Ram clubs from Fresno, in, on to the semifinals on Saturday. And then. 3 p.m., Sierra and Mount San Jacinto. That will be one heck of a matchup to watch in the women's bracket. Patrick Springer, the athletic director at, and dean at Mount San Jacinto, told me yesterday his women are going to win it, and he seemed very confident. Easy hoop for Austin Harris. And the final eight seconds will take off here as Carney wants to step back. Jordan. Steps in, he'll take the final shot, no good. The final score, City College of San Francisco 86, Allen Hancock 63. The Rams move on to the semifinals. We'll step aside, come back, wrap things up here for the quarterfinals in the men's bracket. It's the 3C to a basketball championship on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
<laughs> Day two in the books here at the 3C2A 2018 Basketball Championships. City College of San Francisco moves on to Saturday with a big win over Allen Hancock. Uh, gentlemen, uh, a very great day of basketball here. Cerritos moves on, City College of San Francisco. The defending state champs still in the mix in Fresno City, represented in both brackets. Yeah, a great day for me. I, I you know, I come here, uh, there's twofold kind of, you know, to, to do the commentating, but also I like to watch and see what everybody's doing and so I can prepare myself for next year. And I'm taking notes and seeing a lot of good basketball and a lot of good coaches and a lot of good programs and, a lot of guys who believed and, you know, feel bad for four guys that got to go home, but but feel good that four guys, four teams are staying here uh, to live to fight another day. You know, as always, great stories coming in here for a number of teams, Cinderella stories and teams trying to finish off fantastic seasons. And uh, to Perry's point, uh, yeah, it's it's a shame in some ways, obviously, that somebody's season ends uh, in any given game here. But uh, in terms of today, I, I think the drama really builds in some matchups that we're anticipating yeah. get a little bit closer to fruition here with the top seeds really holding on so i think tomorrow's going to be outstanding i think that we're going to have some high drama in both brackets uh but with the men especially here with the top seeds holding on uh, it's going to be interesting tomorrow yeah same schedule tomorrow one three five and seven uh to get it started early on it's merced and fresno Merced and Fresno. Yep. And then it's uh, Mount San Jacinto. Sierra and Mount San Jacinto. Okay. Yeah. All right. and Was then that a guess? No, no I'm, I'm just making sure okay. that I educated have the brackets. Also, yeah, yep. an educated guess. Well, hey, we, keep have, track of. we have the games yesterday. Yeah, a lot going on. <laughs> City, City College of San Francisco and Cerritos in game three on the day in the defending state champs. It's game four, I believe. Is it game four? Yeah, I think so. See, I'm just getting my brackets all mixed up. Yeah, here. no, it's okay. <laughs> just as long as I have the, the, the teams that are moving on. With, the, with, yeah, how, you know, with just, how handsome you are, it's not a big just, deal. Just watch all day, and then you know you, you never want to miss any game. So you're, you're all set then. Well, hey, my, my, I figure. I, I have a better half. She's, she's much better than <laughs> I, 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 I outkick my coverage. I, sure. I can vouch for that. I, I just want to point out, I think that we have a clear best four teams in the, in the, in the state for the men that are going forward tomorrow. I think tomorrow's matchups – you got a lot of talent on the floor, and I think uh, it's going to be a fun day of basketball. Yeah, Cerritos and uh, City Counts of San Francisco, that I think is the game to watch tomorrow. Uh, if the numbers today are any, any indication, over 8,000 views for the Yuba Cerritos game. Uh, just yeah. a terrific showing in terms of the coverage and, and the viewership. And we hope to have everybody back tomorrow. That'll do it for our coverage here today on day two, day three of the 2018 Basketball Championships live tomorrow here from Ventura. Thank you for watching, everybody, for the entire crew here at SoCalCollegeSports.com. Matt Henson, Emery Johnson, Alyssa Root, Jorge Zapata. Just joining off Perry Webster. I'm Mike Zapata signing off. We'll see you tomorrow.